our kids' sermon quiz today. It goes like this. Number one, what shape is used many times on the slides? Is it an arrow, a square, or a circle? Number two, what animal is in a picture? Is it a mountain goat, a cat, a monkey, or a lizard? And then what Bible verse is the last one shown on the screen? Is it Isaiah 14, Ephesians 4, James 4, or none of the above? How many times do we say the word way today? And if you keep count of that, young people, you can go and see our lollipop lady, Sister Bev, in the uh, foyer uh, at the uh, welcome desk and uh, get that. We are in a sermon series called Politics and Power. And uh, last week, uh, we talked about how his kingdom replaces all kingdoms. That ultimately, as we look at what is going on, of course, Jesus has a worldwide message, a worldwide mission and a worldwide interest and that our primary citizenship is to be citizens of a kingdom that is not of this world and so if we are living as if our primary citizenship is in heaven and not of this world there's only so much interest we're going to have in the political ongoings here on earth His kingdom replaces all kingdoms. And it doesn't matter um, how good the kingdom of the world is or any version of the kingdom of the world. It ultimately cannot be the kingdom of God. And so we remember this and we looked at how Satan uh, holds authority over the sinful world we're in and the kingdoms of this world. He's the one who deceives the nations. We looked at that. We talked about even if you could get things the way you want them politically. Maybe the president you want in the United States, stack both houses of Congress the way you would want, and stack the Supreme Court, you still have a deceived kingdom of the world. And so we remember that his kingdom replaces all kingdoms. Now, as we move forward into our series, I will tell you where we're probably going to spend the next two weeks, although I study all week and sometimes the Lord leads a little different than where I thought he was uh, previously. It's been a challenging week for me personally as I've been studying because it's challenged me uh, to think uh, differently about some things as I've been reading and studying through the week. And um, it's also challenged me and brought me back to some things that I have known, but uh, maybe we're not uh, living out in practice to the level at which I really should. So it's been a good week. I will tell you that this sermon this week is more of a foundational message to build upon and lead us into what we're covering the next couple of weeks. The next couple of weeks, we're going to look at politics and power um, really at the heart of where it is for the times in which we live. Politics and power, and, and yes, it, it, it applies to potentially some of the political season we're in today because the politics and power that the Bible focuses on for our time are outlined via two symbols in Revelation 13, a land beast and a sea beast that are the epitome of politics and power. And and one of them is closer to home here in the land in which we live then perhaps we might want to remember at times so politics and power that's where we're going over the next couple of weeks today is more foundational as we remember that his kingdom replaces all kingdoms and uh, today we're going to talk about how the only way up is down that is our sermon title and uh, will be something that we uh, review and go through today uh, many times As we look at politics and power, this series was initially inspired by reading the myth of a Christian nation, how the quest for political power is destroying the church. And um, then uh, also today's message is based in part on a presentation in my conflict management class at seminary by Professor Stan Patterson at Andrews University. He certainly got some ideas from him that we've incorporated today and we want to give that credit. And so our sermon title today, The Only Way Up is Down. Now, that might sound odd to talk about, especially since 
2020, right now, we are in a presidential election year that is now officially in full swing. And early voting, in some places, actually begins very soon now, doesn't it? And so, of course, we're 65 days from the presidential election right now, and we can expect media and social media to be in a frenzy. And just in case you haven't already picked up on this in previous years or this year, one of the things that you can expect from this point forward and already is much shameless self-promotion. How does that actually go along with what the Bible talks about? What about the biblical principle that the only way up is down? As we hear promises about who can serve us best from the top, I personally often think of this quote that I came across years ago in some of my seminar presentations. It comes to mind often as I hear these promises. In order to become the master, the politician poses as the servant. Think about that for just a moment. That was from Charles de Gaulle, 18th president of France. And look with me in Revelation 12. We're going to read about the consummate politician, really the first politician in the universe, who still thinks he's running for some kind of office today. Revelation 12, verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. God's Word speaks to these issues today. And it says here, Revelation 12 and verse 7, it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, which he was also cast down. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Now, there are some themes that are going to come out for us today. Not only this conflict in heaven which was more than a physical battle, but also a battle of, of politicking, if you will. We'll talk about it in just a moment. And he deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven, saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him. So the dragon gets overcome. What kind of awesome, forceful power would it take to overcome the dragon? What tells us? It's not an over-authority power at all. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So they overcame him through Jesus coming down from the throne of heaven and laying down his life. And they overcame because they did not love their lives to the death as they offered their testimony in Jesus. And then it says in verse 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a what? A short time. Now, there's several points in here. For instance, one, it says there was war in heaven. Of all, all places, you might imagine war in heaven. You go, really? And in heaven? War? Now, the Greek word there is, is not the exact, uh, exactly the same root word that we get the word politics for, but it is similar. And you've got to imagine that before there's any open conflict, there's, there's uh, strategy, uh, there's negotiation, there's, there's politicking on the side. There's probably some of this, well, I know God's been running things and He's the Creator and all, but you know, if I were in charge, it would be different. It would be better. It would, whatever it took. Somehow or another, through persuasive influence, Lucifer had one-third of the heavenly angels before conflict began ready to take his side when it did. And so there was politicking in heaven. Now, one of the things that Lucifer missed from the inception is the only way up is down. 
All problems in the universe began with the first politician when he decided on self-promotion. If I were in charge, etc., etc., etc. Satan went up the down path. He went up, this is a spiritual principle, he went up the down path. Now, if you try to go up the down path, self-promotion, domination, coercion, uh, promoting oneself, exalting oneself, you may for a time appear to be on top of the pile. But those who exalt themselves, God brings down. And those who humble themselves, God lifts up. This is a spiritual principle, and the only way up is down. The only, you know, they say, well, well, what goes up must come down. And indeed, through self-promotion, self-exaltation, self-centeredness, and self-serving, what goes up must come down. But through the spiritual principle of lowering oneself, of humbling oneself, of choosing the path of Jesus, which is a path of service, the path down leads up. Uh, let's look at this here with Satan. It's, this is under the symbolism of the, the prince of Tyrus we see here. For you have said in your heart, this is heart speak. In other words, he didn't say it out loud. This is what he's thinking inside. Does that make sense? You've said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne... Above the stars are angels, Revelation 1.20. A star represents an angel in prophecy. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. In other words, he was no longer content to be an angel. He wanted to be above the angels, and he wanted to sit. Now notice, exalt a throne and then sit. He's wanting to rule and reign the universe. That's what it's talking about. Sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will be like the Most High. The Most High is God. So he wants to exalt his throne above the angels and sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north where God's throne is and be like the Most High. Satan went up the down path. The context of what we just read, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So he sought to exalt himself, go up, but he's ultimately going to go down to the lowest depths of the pit. He went up the down path. The only way up is down. Here's another one for you. Thou art the anointed cherub. Cherub's a type of angel. You are the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Ezekiel 28. Now, what, what is uh, this cat on the screen for? It's because I clicked the button too early. Let's back up. I have set thee so. I missed my cue. Notice, he was put in a position by God. God's talking here, and God says, You're the anointed cherub that covereth, I have set thee so. And, and there's a reason this is in the King James. You, you see it in other translations, but it's, it's, it's worded easier to see here for us today. I have set thee so. In other words, God says, I picked you up and put you there. That's where I wanted you. I created you to be there. The problem came in when he was not content to be where God had placed him. God had placed him there. Years ago, we had a mama cat on the farm in Mississippi. And uh, for whatever reason, she deemed that where she had her kittens wasn't working. And so she decided to move them. Now, how does a mama cat move her kittens, the little tiny ones? She literally, you know, bites them in the back of the neck and picks them up. And that's not considered a hurtful thing. I mean, moms, if, if you bit your kids in the back of the neck and tried to walk around carrot toting them, that wouldn't work in, in human, human society. Not, not the same thing. But for the mama cat, that's just how it is. She can't hold little babies in her arms and rock them. No, she just bites them in the back of the neck, picks them up, and then she puts them where she wants them. And you know what? That means they're right where they need to be because Mama put them where she wanted them. That's a very poignant uh, picture 
You see, when God puts someone in a position to serve, in a position to lead, it's without their own effort. They may have been living a faithful life, may have been gaining life experience, but God picks them up and sets them where He wants them. Ending up in the service of God is not about politicking. Moses. Moses had tried the ascendancy model, had he not? It didn't work in the service for God. He ended up herding sheep for 40 years. And then God went out in the desert and like a mama cat, picking up the baby and putting it where she wants, he brought Moses to be the leader of all Israel. David was out also herding sheep. When uh, the prophet of God was sent out to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be king, they didn't even call David in. He was one of the younger ones, and you know the authority went to the oldest, and, and he was out watching the sheep. And besides, there's a lot of sons here. You can pick from them. We don't need to leave the sheep out there by themselves. And the prophet said, the one I've been sent to anoint is not here. Do you have another son? Uh, yes. And so he was picked up and placed where he was needed to be. Joseph, and a dream took place, right? And he went to Egypt, sold into slavery. And then you know, what happened in, in Potiphar's house? And then the dreams. And, and God literally ticked him and set him where he wanted him to be. Daniel, same type of thing. He had been faithful to God. He was called in to interpret what had taken place. He was made second in the kingdom, and so on and so forth. Biblically speaking, there is a principle that the only way up is down. Now, there's a counterfeit of the only way up is down, and that's knowing that the only way up is down and trying to go up through going down. That, that, that's not going to work. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, let's look a little bit more before we get there. Of Satan, it says your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. So there's the, the going upward, the, the upward momentum, the, the trying to get somewhere. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground, I laid you before kings that they may gaze upon you. Ezekiel 28. And so this is under the symbolism of an earthly king, but speaking about Satan and his fall. And so he tried to ascend and he's cast down. Now the only way up is down. Look here. In the last days, it culminates, and this is going to lead toward where we're going in the next couple of weeks some. It culminates and ends much the way it began. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, the second coming of Christ, will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Did you get that? He exalts himself. Just like Satan in the beginning, exalting himself. So that's going to be displayed with the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, what you might call antichrist power at the end. Exalting himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What we're reading about here is dominance-based leadership. To a greater or lesser degree, all the kingdoms of the world are based on dominance-based leadership. Now, Romans 13 is clear that God has ordained government and works through it. One of the things I came across this week was that... Um, Martin Luther in the Reformation, he had said that government was, uh, and, and, and powers that rule over was a creation order. But Diedrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian, who was a pacifist that came to the conclusion he needed to try to assassinate Hitler. True stories. I mean, people really wrestle with some, some major things, right? He concluded that, in his wrestling with this, that that governments with power over people authority was not a creation order, but a uh, temporary order within fallen creation. And so he was challenging Luther's theology on that. We might look at some of those kind of things going forward in the next few weeks. 
But to a greater or lesser degree, all kingdoms of the world have a dominance-based approach. And that's one of the things that identifies them as kingdoms of the world separate from kingdom of God. You can see the kingdom of God at work on earth, but you won't find it in dominance-based principles. Okay? The next few weeks, we'll have lessons on politics and power, and, and we'll be looking at two political powerhouses in Revelation 13 as part of that. So Satan went up the down path. Jesus came down the up path. Don't let this blow your mind. It's really quite simple. And as simple as it is, there's a lot there. Satan went up the down path. Jesus came down the up path. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Ephesians 4, 9 and 10. This is speaking of Jesus. And it says before he ascended, he first descended. Jesus went down the up path. He first descended. The only way up is down. Look with me in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. We look at it today. The incarnation of Jesus. This is one of the best passages ever to preach the gospel from. The, the incarnation of Christ. Him coming down to this world where He went down the up path. We see it in Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5, we begin. It says, Let this mind or attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. So Jesus, being in the form of God, considered it fair to say, He was, is, always has been, always shall be, and it is true, fully God. Yet what does it say? but made himself of no reputation. In the Greek, the, the, the um, imperative here is that he completely emptied himself of title or claiming what he had coming of giving up rights, if you will. Made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself... So Almighty God comes to a lowly order of creation, mankind, and that wasn't humble enough. That wasn't far enough. That wasn't down as far as He was planning to go. He could have still been descending from the throne of heaven to be an earthly ruler, and yet that was not low enough for His plan. Made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. Philippians 2, verse 8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. This is Jesus going down the up path. We just read about the down, 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 down. Now notice what comes next. Verse 9, Therefore... Remember, anytime you see the word therefore in the Bible, you want to pause and go, hmm, what's that therefore? It sets forth a conclusion. Therefore, God, so this is the conclusion of all that, sets forth this conclusion, it sets it up. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. Notice he's not exalting himself. God is exalting him. The Father is exalting him. And given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The only way up is down. Jesus went down, he descended. And then he was exalted. 
Jesus came down the up path. Does that make sense? All this ups and downs, don't get confused. One takeaway from today would be, though, that the only way up is down. We're talking about a passive ascendancy model, not a dominance ascendancy, not a coercive ascendancy, not being a person of assertiveness or self-promotion. Passive ascendancy. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And He will do what? Lift you up. This is a principle in Scripture. The only way up is down. Let's compare the models. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14, and elsewhere, you see an ascendant, power-oriented model that is cast down. Philippians 2 and elsewhere, you see a descendant, service-oriented model, which is lifted up. Does this make sense? The only way up is down. What are some applications? Mm. This gets closer to home because we're going to talk about home. What are some implications here? Well, do we view our home as a place for service or for dominance and control? Uh, we immediately kind of run away from, well, I don't, I'm not into dominance and control. No. Well, this is an area I've been challenged in this week myself. Am I getting up and going through the day until I go to bed at night at home with an attitude of service? Or am I finding myself tired at the end of the day with an entitled, leave me alone, I've got the right to relax attitude? Yeah. This gets close to home. What about what happens in relationships a lot? Of, this, is, this is oftentimes where relationships are broken down. If your relationship is having a problem, it's it's likely that two people, two people have a problem with this. Think about it. I will be more fill in the blank when he or she is more fill in the blank. It's, it's not a negotiation. It, it's not... There's things to wrestle through. I'm not going to go much deeper on that, but parents must be in charge but can still exhibit servanthood and servant attitudes in the home. The only way up is what? Down. My friends, I can tell you if you try to live in your home with a self-first, self-promoting attitude that your home is not going to be the place Jesus would want it to be. And that's husband, that's wife, that's... Cameron. The only way up is down. Applications, what about at work? You know at work in the secular society or... Well, that's, that's, where, you, that's where you get ahead, that's where you... You, you take advantage. That's where you do what it takes to promote oneself. But if you go to work looking to serve and looking to help, people that do that with God-given talent end up getting promoted above the people, oftentimes at least, that are self-serving, self-seeking, and self-promoting. You say, well, but that's not a way to get ahead in this world. Well, my friends, if we can't get ahead in this world by living a godly life, we don't need to be ahead. The only way up is down. 
Application. What about at church? At church, it's not about having a position. It's about service. In fact, when uh, we start looking, you know, nominating committees and different, different situations about putting people into positions in the church. Let's say the position of elder in the church. Are we looking for someone that is polished up front and distinguished and does a good... Well, we, we would like our elders to be those things, certainly. Are we looking for someone that is out there serving? See what I'm saying? You look for those serving to officially fill the positions of servant leaders. If I'm looking for an elder in the church, I'm looking around and going, who's out visiting the sick? Who's out giving Bible studies? Who's out ministering to people? Those are the people God has already called to do this work. Let's recognize God's call in their life by asking them to officially serve in church. Right? And so, here's another thing is, is church, even just church attendance. How does this affect it? Well, instead of showing up to church for what I get, we show up to church for what I give. If not, we tend to fall into the attitude that the world has, an entertainment or self-serving attitude. And let's face it, sometimes church just isn't entertaining as television. And so we leave disappointed because we came to get, instead of looking around the room at who needs to be connected with and encouraged, and looking around the room to see who's not here that needs to be connected with and encouraged. And we don't get what we came to get, so we leave disappointed because we came to get a blessing instead of to be a blessing. That's good to get a blessing. But more times than not, the spiritual principle is we get the blessing when we choose to be the blessing. And if not, then we can be disappointed. Here, here's another one for you, okay? You say, you're not preaching, you're meddling the day. Oh, I'm preaching, it's just, it's the heavy stuff, you know? The only way up is what? Down. Well, what are our applications for politics? Well, last week we talked about how Christ's kingdom replaces all kingdoms of the world. Our citizenship is in a heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. So because of that, and the only way up is down, don't get pulled into the hype of candidates and parties seeking to go up the down path. The only way up is down. Applications. While on earth, all positions are temporary. What do you mean? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a husband in a house, and that's a permanent position. It, it, it is till you or your spouse passes. It's temporary. All positions on earth are temporary. History has stark lessons in this, that everything is temporary. In fact, some have said, and, and this isn't exactly true, but it carries through in many cases, that the only constant is change. While on earth, positions are temporary, at home, at work, or at church. We are stewards, according to the Bible, even of our possessions, and even of our relationships, not owners. We are stewards. A steward is someone that managed someone else's assets for them, and everything that we have and everything that we are is God's. And we manage it on His behalf. Now here's one. And this, this, what do you call a steward that acts like an owner? A thief. Because it's not yours. The only way up is what? Down. Now, here's a glorious irony for you. Are you ready for this one? To him who overcomes... I will grant to sit with me on my what? Throne. So Jesus says, 
he who overcomes will sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. That's Revelation 3, 21. Those who take the down path to service, here's the glorious irony, are picked up and placed onto the throne that Satan tried to get a seat on. Those who humble themselves and follow the servanthood of Jesus eventually sit on the throne with Jesus that Satan tried to take by force. So how is it with you in your life? Are there areas in your life where you need to look at what's going on and reflect, as I did this week, even in my home life, to move to a servant model that humbles oneself? I can tell you that as we get into this election season, it can also be a reminder of how much Sometimes even ourselves and our own homes have been affected by this self-promotion, uplifting, self-first mentality. And so in your quiet time with God, ask God how He would like to make you more of a servant. And remember, the only way up is down. And don't allow what we're facing these next few months to affect more your home, work, or church with a, up, a, a self-promoting attitude. But humble it before God and serve Him. A kid's ser- sermon quiz, what shape is used many times? Did we use an arrow, a square, or a circle? We use an arrow a lot, that's right. What animal's in a picture? Was it a mountain goat, a cat, a monkey, or a lizard? That's right, a cat. And then number three, the Bible verse. Uh, What Bible verse is, is the last one shown on the screen? Was it Isaiah 14, Ephesians 4, James 4, or none of the above? That's right, it was Revelation 3.21, which isn't one of those options. So that threw some of you for a loop, I'm sorry. And then how many times did we say the word way? I bet that was way many times, wasn't it? Sister Bev, you can let them know in the foyer. Stand with me. We close in prayer today. Today was a foundational message for what we're building up on as we go ahead, as we move forward. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you that for us, you chose the path downward. Come down to us And meet us where we're at and lift us up to you. Help us to not only think on that, but reflect that more in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.